Hey, I'm Brian, and this is the Nintendo Switch, a console that is very hyped recently. But why, and should you pick one up in 2018? The Nintendo Switch is a really fun and versatile console, and that is even though it doesn't actually have the greatest hardware inside. You'll find a Tegra X1, 4GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage in this device. I actually like to refer to it as essentially a shield tablet with two Wiimotes strapped to both sides, because that's really what it is. But even though it is not that powerful for a gaming console compared to the Xbox One and the PS4, it is fairly powerful for a tablet. And that's also why you'll find a fan and a vent at the top. That fan doesn't come on during mobile play though, it only comes on when you put the console in its dock and play on the TV. But I can fortunately say that it's not very loud and nothing compared to the old Wii and Wii U that were, in my opinion, very loud and obnoxious. But that the fan comes on when you put it in its dock is actually because the console also needs more power when docked to put out to a 1080p TV. The display on the console itself is only 720p, so it doesn't need that much power and does not as much cooling. But the display on the front of this console is actually really nice. The 720p full capacitive multi-touch screen, yes, finally on a Nintendo console we have a capacitive touch screen, is really nice and looks really good. In day to day you're not really going to notice that it's only 720p because the games still look really good on it. And Nintendo's art style also helps with the lower resolution. The two stereo speakers on the front are also a nice enhancement of the media experience and fit very well with the nice display. But while we are already talking about the display, why not get into general usability and the interface before we get to games. The power button's at the top and next to that is the volume rocker. And the console actually boots up pretty fast, but you're probably not going to have to boot it up all that often, because it does have a standby mode, just like any other Android tablet would have, and there are actually a lot of similarities to your general Android tablet, which I'm going to get to more later. Now the console itself also does have pretty good battery life at a few hours, and you can just stuff it in the dock really quickly when you need to charge it up. And it also doesn't lose that much battery when it's in standby mode. And it's nice that any time you just want to stop playing the game, you can just press the home button and put it to sleep, and pick up wherever you left off right after that. The button on the other side is a dedicated screenshot button, by the way. What is pretty smart is that the volume and charging indicators show up in the top right corner so you can even see them when the console is in its dock because the display sticks out a little bit. Now charging the console should be okay with the included power supply but also with any USB power delivery or quick charge power brick that comes with your phone. Not any other power brick will work though because the console does require a lot of power to charge, especially when you're gaming while charging. Well, that does also mean that it charges pretty quickly when you're not using it. Now what I don't like as much is that the charging port is only at the bottom. I know this has to be this way in order for the console to be docked, but it would have been nice if the console would actually be able to be rotated and the screen would rotate with it and the kickstand would also fold out more, so you could plug in the charging cable at the top when having the console on the table. Because as it is now, you really can charge the console when you put it down on the table. And the kickstand is really limited in general. It only has one position and it's pretty flimsy, which is contrary to the whole other console actually being very well built and feeling very well put together. Now under that kickstand is the slot for a microSD card that you can use to store games on. Though I can really say that you probably won't need a microSD card at first. Games like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Super Mario Odyssey for example only take up a few gigabytes so if you only play a few games, maybe some casual titles and also have some games on cartridges, you probably won't need an additional micro SD card. Nintendo originally wanted to make this a download only console, but it actually now has a cartridge slot that you can use for game cartridges similar to the ones of the DS, a little smaller actually, but I still prefer to download games because I don't like to haul around a lot of cartridges. Now speaking of download only, there's actually nothing apart from games that you can download to this console right now. Nintendo says streaming services are coming soon though. And it would be very nice to have Netflix or YouTube on here, because if you detach the Joy-Con controllers, it's actually very similar to your standard Android media tablet. And the interface also reflects that it is very similar to a normal tablet. And the interface right now is very centered around games, but you can see that in the future it might become a very nice media device, because in the album, for example, you can pinch to zoom and scroll through your pictures just as you would on any other tablet. 
So that tells you that this would really be versatile in that way too. But that you can't do anything apart from gaming on this console right now doesn't mean that you can't kill time with it. It's actually the complete opposite. All of the different playstyles that this console have might very well be its strongest point and the most innovative feature of the console. The Switch already has some great first party titles with Zelda, Super Mario Odyssey and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that take great advantage of all of the different ways that you can play with this console. You can of course play it as a normal handheld with both Joy-Cons attached, but you can also detach them and use them individually in both hands. There's also the Joy-Con grip where you can put both controllers in and use it as a normal controller, which is very comfortable actually and I don't think it's that bad compared to a normal controller. And you probably also won't need the Joy-Con charge grip because both controllers have a very long battery life and they charge when they're on the console. And putting them in is also very satisfying with the nice clicking sound. Now of course one person cannot only use both controllers, you can also share one controller with another person. So one can use one Joy-Con and the other one can use the other one. And it's actually pretty nice to play with these controllers, they're of course not as comfortable as using a real controller. But for the times where you just want to play multiplayer quickly on the go, this is actually really nice. And local multiplayer on the go is something we didn't see up till now. Multiplayer is actually also the reason why the left controller doesn't have a D-pad but these four buttons that turn into ABXY buttons when you use it as an independent controller. And the straps for the Joy-Cons that make them a little bit more comfortable to use actually also work interchangeably between both controllers, so you don't have to fiddle around and see which one belongs to which. But what is nice is that you actually only have to buy another pair of Joy-Cons and can play 4-player multiplayer. I really like this approach that you can just separate the controllers into two, because it's not that comfortable, yes, but for the times that you are going to be playing with 4 or 2 players, which is probably not going to be that often, I don't think comfort is really the main issue. You just want to have fun, and for that it's a lot cheaper and a lot nicer the way they've done that. And having less buttons on one Joy-Con isn't really an issue, at least in the Nintendo games, because most buttons are mapped twice anyway. The rumble motors are also something Nintendo especially talked about, and they are really good. You can really feel where something is coming from. But I've actually never seen the rumble motors or the special infrared camera being used anywhere else apart from one to switch Maybe some games should take better advantage of all of the features this console has, because there are really a ton. And all of the different experiences can of course not only be had on the go on the small screen, but also on your big screen at home when the console is docked. I like the big dock because you can hide some things in it with the USB ports that are hidden, but you can also use any other compatible USB-C adapter with this that you can take on the go to for example connect it to a TV at your friend's house. Now I said before that I like to think of this as a shield tablet with two Wiimotes attached, and I already talked about the tablet part, but it's actually also because these two controllers, of course, also have motion controls. So one of these controllers basically functions like a Wiimote, just without the sensor bar at the top and with the gyroscope in them. And these motion controls and the console actually don't really limit you in the way that you use it. Most games recommend you to use both Joy-Cons individually, but you can also leave them attached to the console and just rotate the whole console that works the same way. And I think it's really fun and really nice that games like Just Dance, for example, that are really great for parties, can now also be taken on the go and you can just set this down and play with a friend or take this to another one's house without having to worry about taking a big console with power adapter and all of that stuff. All of the playstyles and the way that you can use this, the portability of it, are really, really great things and strong points for this console. Super Mario Odyssey is one of the greatest titles that Nintendo has probably ever made and it's really nice to play it on this great of a console. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is as fun as ever to play with friends at parties, for example. Now, portability is also a strong argument for this console if you're not into the normal Nintendo and casual titles. Because games like Skyrim and Rocket League, that are normally really great on the PC, can now be played on the go for the first time, which is really nice. And you can also dock the console and then play them on a big screen if you want. Now the console sells very well and this is also why these titles come as third party ones for this console. And I think that it has a great future ahead of it with all of the updates that are supposed to come to it still. One update is actually supposed to come at the end of the year, which is the paid online multiplayer. But because it only comes at the end of the year, you can play it for free online now. So that would actually be a strong argument to buy it now too. So I think now is a better time than ever to pick up this console because there are tons of great games out now and much more to come in the future. 
and all of the updates that Nintendo wants to give to this console are going to make it much more versatile than it even is now. Of course it doesn't have the same kind of great graphics as all of the other consoles, but it does still output 1080p which looks very good, and the fun you will have while playing is unrivaled on the Nintendo Switch. And that's actually also why I like to think of it as a successor to the Wii more than to the Wii U, because the Wii was also about fun and not about graphics, and the Switch definitely delivers in the fun and versatility department. But that's basically it for this video. I hope I could help you if you wanted to pick one of these up, and you of course know which buttons to press to help me out, and also press that follow button on Twitter. I'm Brian, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.